The first thing we're going to do is check NOAA's probabilistic winter precipitation guidance chart to get a general overview of what may happen in terms of snow falling in the area that we're interested in for up to 72 hours from now. This is what you're going to see when you first go to their site using the link that is in the description below. And it's probably worth noting that you're not stuck on the USA if you are north of the 49th parallel. And what you can do in that case is just drag the chart around and then you can also zoom in by using your mouse wheel or this little control panel over here. And for purposes of our demonstration, we're going to mostly be, because I'm in Banff, uh, we'll be looking at the areas around here for the throughput of this full demonstration. Um, but obviously you will be more focusing on another area of interest to you using the same procedures that I'm showing here. So once we are there, uh, then you can use a bunch of the other options that are presented on this page to get through and um, curate the reporting that you want uh, even for the periods. You can go 24 hour, 48 hour, 72 hour, and so on, and then pick your accumulation amounts that you want and uh, toggle the map overlays on and off and so on. Um, over here, take a look at your, your legend. And um, I haven't played around with this enough to see whether I can switch the default, which is snow amount in inches, over to uh, metric value. And if somebody knows how to do that, it would probably be much appreciated if you would uh, note how to do that in the comments below. Next, we're going to compare the European and US A models for your area's uh, forecast. So um, each model has its own strengths and weaknesses, and that's why we are going to use both of them. Um, there are a lot of forecasters in the USA, for example, that really prefer the European ECMWF model. And if you want more information as to the why and wherefores of all that, uh, there is a link contained down below in the description so you can get more details on it. And uh, the links for both of these charts are also in that same area. So now we'll move over here and you can see the two of them side by side here. And if you go to the slider down below, you can slide across and you'll see the cumulative buildup and you'll see the forecast time position uh, changing on the top and this takes us out for 240 hours from now from when I'm doing this and I have now demonstrated what we can see on the ECMWF and now we're going to move over to the GFS over here and then I'm going to take the slider and move it across and uh, you'll notice here that there is a difference and uh, the GFS does forecast out further. So in order to keep them equivalent, I'm going to go over to about the 240 hour mark. And now you can compare the difference between the two of them and see that there is um, quite the difference between what the GFS and the uh, European are forecasting, especially if you were down here in the states in the Colorado area. And you can see over here that uh, the Europeans are looking at uh, some precip in there as opposed to nothing over here for the GFS. So I recommend that you uh, 
I always look at the two of them and usually um, what we're finding for example this week in terms of precipitation that was forecast uh, the uh, GFS had it uh, I think one was to the north and one was to the south and in reality the precipitation band kind of went up through Montana in a northeasterly direction and it was basically a composite of both those models it was right in the middle of them so that's why you really need to curate uh, what you think is most likely to happen and stay on top of those forecasts as the day of your interest gets closer and uh, any models that go out much more than this forecast period are considered to be pretty uh, specious at best. Now the models diverge in a big way when you get out there this far. This is day nine. Some models toss out systems and others don't. And what I'm about to show you is for entertainment purposes only, but it's just a comment on why the European model only runs out 10 days, but the GFS runs out 16. A lot of times when you let the models run out really far, they go into a mode that becomes, well, uh, very high amplitude. Is it boundary conditions in the model? Is it over convection? Is it just the fact that they're trying to conserve mass and behave according to the hydrostatic bound? I don't know, but they often just do this. Are you ready? Yesterday's 12Z run of the GFS tried to produce a hurricane coming between the Yucatan and Cuba that then slams into Florida as a monster, and then watch this. Now, please remember, this was a model forecast at 300 hours. Don't, this isn't reality. But it then became a blizzard for New England by November the 9th. I'll keep an eye on this, but right now, just understand we are in model la-la land out here. But fun, just fun to watch, okay? So, um, there's probably not much need to go out past the 200 and 40 hour forecast uh, although for shits and giggles you can feel free to take the GFS and go even further out and see what happens. Before we go to the Weather Nerds website uh, one heads up if you don't know it already uh, you might want to look up the lat long position for the area that you're interested in. Now we're on to the Weather Nerds uh, website and that's weathernerds.org and um, go up to the top here this is the landing page that you get to and um, again because we had looked at those two charts previously you'll see up here at the top we've got both the GFS and the ECMWF that are available to us so um, you can go through both of those and I'm gonna just go to the GFS so what we did was we um, selected the GFS. We ended up with uh, this on our screen. And you'll see that um, we have a, a more limited overview up to the north. But in my case, being in Canada, it's still enough just to squeeze my location in uh, southern Alberta into this map. And the first thing I'm going to want to do is take my cursor and I'm going to draw a box over the area of interest to me and you'll be doing the same thing. Before we get started on that though, a um, couple of things to point out. This box up here on the top left of the chart corresponds to the lat long position of the cursor as you move it around. Because I know where I am already, I'm going to draw a box around that area down to the US border and then I'm going to go up here you'll see that it starts flashing green the part that needs updating and I'm going to go zoom in and once I've zoomed in this is now what I have and I am now in the more general area and then what I'm going to go down here is I'm going to go to display options and move over to metric because to me, uh, I visualize snowfall now in uh, millimeters and uh, I'll update my plot. After I've done and picked my display options for the units that I want, 
then what I'm going to want to do is go up to my model fields and then I'm going to go to snowfall and then I'll pick the snowfall time period forecast that I'm interested in and for purposes of what we're doing now we'll go to snowfall 72 hour and if you need more information on it you can uh, click on the question mark and that'll give you more so we'll go back here and snowfall and I'm going to go 72 hours so now uh, the screen changes and you'll see here that we've got our GFS 72 hour forecast for snowfall expressed in millimeters and here's the initialization of the chart given in Zulus so then um, what we want to do is uh, get a loop going here and so what I'll do up here is we'll start out with the default values and then you can start playing around with those to customize them and it looks like the start hour and is from now and uh, well it's actually from the most recent GFS data which was initialized today and uh, at 0600 Zulu so then I go down to get loop give it a minute to process the data that you want and this is what you're going to end up with and now uh, while you're doing this you can start moving your cursor around to get your more precise area and unfortunately I haven't figured out a way to place a mark on this chart I don't know if there is one but if anyone's got any suggestions for that uh, it'd be great to hear about them in the comments below now I find that uh, when I really want to hone in on this it's going a little too fast for me so what I prefer to do is stop it and then use these arrow keys to move through the time periods so I can digest in finer detail uh, what it's telling me here so there is a lot available on this weather nerds uh, chart that you can support them on Patreon because you don't have to pay for this and um, I have found that although you can get some really nice charts from Weather Bell and weathermodels.com those guys uh, I've asked them if I could use some of their stuff for some of my presentations they won't even bother responding to me so uh, if you're someone that's got a deep uh, budget in the hundreds of thousands of dollars to spend because you're running a TV station with weather forecasts uh, they'll probably talk to you but if you're just like uh, Joe Schmo like you and I uh, don't even bother and now moving on to the last step of our process for forecasting snow in our area we've taken a look at the GFS model and now we want to look at the ECMWF and we're going to go to ECMWF full here and we're going to redraw our little zoom area and then we're going to update it by clicking on the zoom in and you'll see we've roughly now gotten an area similar to what I had before and if you actually wanted to uh, get more granular you can do that again and we'll do that just for the purposes of shits and giggles again and we're going to zoom in again and now you can see we have that more granular view and we have retained no we haven't we haven't retained our settings we're back on to Fahrenheit so now we're going to go over to display options and in my case pick metric again and then we go update plot and now we are there and then we're gonna make sure that our snowfall is 72 hours and you can see here that that precip is not available because it's a different sum or forecast hour so then if you get that you are going to have to go back and pick a different snowfall hour let's try 24 hour and now we can get the 24 hour on the ECMF and you can 
play around with that if you want. It depends on the time of day you're doing this. Uh, if we pick 48 hours, you're not going to get it. And so to get ECMF for snowfall at the time of day I'm at, uh, it's only going to go give me a 24 hour. Then um, we're going to go to the loop and it's a 240 end hour loop. And that's going to give us, and you'll see here that the bar up top now is a lot shorter because it's going through a more limited time period. And we're basically seeing here that uh, it's not thinking we're going to get much for snow where I am, which is roughly in this area for this forecast period. And um, if I want to know, again, this forecast period ends on Sunday at 09 Zulu, which is about 3 in the morning on Sunday morning for where I am. Now you can basically uh, complete everything there and spend some more time playing around with all the things that are available on Weather Nerds and I'm sure you can get a lot more items that are of interest to your particular pursuit.